Hey everyone, very, very grateful to have you joining in on today's message. And today's one is going to be a really good reminder for all of us who haven't heard of, um, who have read or at least heard of the top five regrets of the dying um, from the incredible uh, Bronnie Ware. And also um, for us, for those of us who haven't heard of the top five regrets of the dying, this is gonna be a really good key point. I'm gonna be focused on the number one regret of the dying. All of them are immensely valuable, but I'm talking about the one today that's been most beneficial to have at top of mind whenever making the decisions that I need to make in my life. Um, and it absolutely saved me and really gave me a lot of perspective at a time in my life where I made a really big transition, which was um, to get off the pathway of becoming a lawyer um, when I didn't know anything about personal development and I was totally living my life to the expectations of the world around me and not being in attunement at all to what's right for me, what, what um, my internal wisdom is, where my integrity with myself was. Um, and so I really wanna dive into this one, remind you guys of it or introduce you to it um, because at the end of the day, my belief and my experience has been that nothing is more important than living your own life, okay? So not to the expectations of others, we don't wanna to get to the end of our lives um, with this regret of the, the dying, which is the majority of people who were interviewed at their deathbed by the incredible Bronnie Ware, who was a palliative care nurse here in Australia. Um, and she would interview all of these different people who would be at the end of their life. She would sit with them and she would ask them a series, series of questions. And at the end of um, her interviewing these hundreds and thousands of people that she would see in her palliative care unit, she was able to um, you know, correlate the different responses that people had in terms of when she asked them, what's the one thing that you regret most about your life, right? And when she asked that question and she correlated everybody's responses up, she found that there were five particular um, regrets of the dying that were universal. Um, and the number one, the most common regret of people at the end of their lives is I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself rather than one I felt was expected of me. Okay, and that has really rung true for me um, for a long, long time. So back in 2013 was my first introduction to personal development. Now, some of you listening along, you've heard this story um, a few times, so bear with me. Um, it'll be a good reminder. And for those who don't know my story, then you'll get an insight into that, I guess. Um, but basically back in 2013, I was, um, I'd finished a business degree. I was um, partway through a law degree. Um, I had a year and a half left on my law degree. And at that time in my life, I didn't know any realm of developing yourself outside of go to uni, get a degree, right? That was my mentality of growing yourself and opening up the most stores so that you can live the life you were supposed to live, I guess, right? Um, but at that point in my life, what got me into business was I didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I let one of my brothers like kind of pick my, he said, why don't you just do business? I said, okay, I'll do business. So I did that degree. And then by the end of that realized, well, that's not really getting me anywhere I want to get to. I still don't know what I want to do. Matt, what can I do now that's going to open up the most doors? I decided law would be it because if I got my law degree, that's going to open up the maximum doors in my mind, right? And then I might be, that might be the thing for me and it might open up the right, places for me to discover what the hell I want to do with my life. Um, but basically, as time was going on, every day that was going on, I was getting more and more drained. I was getting more and more um, in need for distraction away from this kind of inner voice that knew I was on the wrong path. But I wasn't able to acknowledge that because Firstly, I didn't have the tools to understand that and to, um, and I, and also I was, I knew the repercussions on a subconscious level, all those fears. If I was to not do what I was doing, I knew everything that I feared most would come true, right? I knew how um, my family would respond to that. I knew um, that, you know, I, I would be, I wouldn't have the support that I had. Um, 
even in a financial realm, in my connections. Um, I felt like I was just living this big fat lie that I had no consciousness really of other than the external ways that it was manifesting in my life by um, you know overeating and then feeling bad about that and then distracting myself over here with health and fitness and thinking you know like that was kind of my savior and then you know all these different things and and going out and being around the people that I was around and you know I was just distracting myself from this inner deeper truth that I wasn't willing to accept and acknowledge at that point because it didn't have the tools to understand it or transcend the fears that would become my reality and so when I was in um, I, uh, 2013, um, my partner at the time introduced me to the world of Tony Robbins. And I went to my very first Tony Robbins event, um, UPW, Unleash the Power Within. And it was the first time I had this opportunity to kind of start to ask myself questions like, hang on a minute, like, what is it that I want? Not what I can see the world expects of me or coming from a very academic family, seeing that that's kind of how I've been brought up. That's the expectation. You go to, you go to uni, you get a law degree, you get a doctor's degree, you get an engineer's degree, whatever it is, right? And that's, that's how you become successful and that's how, where all your happiness supposedly is. Um, when I got to this realm, it was that very first point where I go, hang on, what do I want? Not just what everybody expect of me, right? And it was the first time I actually started to get a bit of clarity and it was a bit scary. Um, but it was really opening me up to this whole realm of um, not seeking permission and validation from the external world, but actually realizing I can guide my own life from the inside out. I don't have to do it from the outside in. And hey, there's some really good answers in here and that I haven't even uh, gained, I haven't even listened to before. And so what I did at that point was I got, I loved that event so much. It really, really helped me to understand um, myself at the deepest level I'd ever understood myself because I'd never really looked in that area before um, and other people. And I become became fascinated with it. And of course, if you've ever been to a Tony Robbins event, then you know how much fun they are. They're like a rock concert. You get to connect in a really meaningful way with people. So. I was sold. I signed up for Mastery University. I wanted everything that Tony Robbins had to um, had to offer, even though I didn't have the money for it, you know. And I just signed up, and I knew I'd figure it out. And um, flash forward, fast forward, I don't know, maybe three or so months. wasn't too long after that. Um, I found myself at Date with Destiny, which is a more intensive um, six day course that you do with him, a live event. Um, and at this event, this is where everything really changed. And just prior to this event, I actually had my uh, exams and it came to the point where all this stuff inside that I wasn't really dealing with that I just kind of opened the door of for the first ever time was starting to really come up for me to the point where I was physically unable to get off the couch. I was like in the fetal position. And the reason why was because everything in my body and soul was, you're not on the right path. What are you doing? It was trying to stop me in my track so that I could actually go within and stop doing, 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 uh, trying to achieve, 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 and actually go in and align with what, what my truth was. And it was a pretty scary place. But when I got to Date With Destiny, that's when it all became so clear. And I was able to do a lot of work um, at that point and go through a lot of processes that allowed me to detach from my fears and insecurities about the expectations of others and letting people down and not finishing what I started. Um, all those things I knew I'd be hit with by the people who were dearest to me. Um, and I was able to see that what was driving below that behavior, if they were to operate like that, which they did, um, I would be able to see beyond below that. These people actually care about me. They do love me. It's just that their model of the world says that you've got to be a successful lawyer or a doctor or engineer or something like that in order to be happy in your life, in order to be secure, in order to have fulfillment. And so they, they were doing their best to make sure that I was on the right path in their model of the world. And when I was able to see that, I was able to handle their fears and I was able to go, you know what? I know that they just want me to be happy. They love me. They care about me. They just want me to be happy. 
that's just their model of the world. And my model of the world is quite different to that. And so, okay, I've got to be willing to accept that I'm going to be hit with their fears, um, but I'm not going to take that personally because I know that at the end of the day, what I'm choosing to do, even if I don't know quite what the right path is right now, if I know what the wrong one is and I get off it, that's going to free up my time and my energy and my um, experience to be able to dis discover, you know, what is actually right for me. And um, what happened was, um, yeah, I did get hit with all of that, but I saw through it and I knew all I have to do right now, I just have to reassure these people. These people that I love and care about that I absolutely want in my life um, and they might not see why I'm doing what I'm doing right now and they, they might very well question it and agree with it and not accept it, but I have to know that this is a long-term game and I have to take 100% responsibility for my life and my happiness and my fulfillment and what's right for me. And nobody, no matter how much they care about me, um, is going to know what's right for me more than I can know for, and discover for myself. And so I knew it was going to come with a pathway being able to reassure these people that are close to me and show them that I was happy and that I could be fulfilled and I could be successful on a pathway that I was more called to. Um, and then, and I've been able to do that and I continue to do that at this point in my life. Um, but at the end of the day, when I made that decision, it was probably the, not probably, it was the most of my life came at that date with destiny, um, experience where, you know, I finally had this realization that I was on the wrong path. I was finally able to own that. And I remember, you know, my partner at the time, I, I said to him, wow, like I've just made this huge discovery. And we went out and we sat in the sunshine on the grass. Um, I think it was in Cairns, in Queensland here in Australia. We sat on the grass and I remember talking and actually owning that I was on the wrong path. And I was, I realized that why I was doing what I was doing for, was for all the wrong reasons. It was because I thought I needed to do that in order to get the acceptance and approval um, from, my, from my loved ones, right? I was thinking I have to live to their expectations if I want to be loved, you know? And we all have this. We all have this. We just don't acknowledge it because it's scary, right? Um, but when I was able to do that, I had the most certainty and clarity I've ever, ever had in my life up until that point. Never had that level of certainty ever before. It felt so freeing. It felt so empowering to, even though I didn't know exactly with perfection I wanted to go and what I wanted to do, and that took some work to discover, I knew exactly when I was on the wrong path and I chose to do something about it, you know? and. Um, the key here, I remember thinking my dad was going to say, um, you've got to finish what you've started. You're a failure if you don't. And he said that stuff to me. And that was the thing that I really thought I was never going to handle. But because I made a choice to do what was right for me, because I actually asked myself those questions and I actually acknowledged what was right for me and stopped seeking validation from the external world, um, in that moment and stop trying to live to somebody else's model of the world and instead develop my own, I was able to see it for what it was. And it's given me such a gift, you know, that I have that strength to, to, to make the right choices for myself. And, you know, we're going to have moments in our lives where we can fall back into those same patterns where, you know, I noticed, I noticed just from that scenario, I then, you know, my partner at the time supported me wholeheartedly. And I, I felt like, wow, it's so special to just have this one person in my life who can back me. Um, and then what happened in that dynamic, I've, I can since now in hindsight reflect onto, I shifted um, living to the expectations of what I, I saw my partner wanted from me as well. So we, we aren't going to just snap out of these patterns, but we can become more highly aware of them. And so, yeah, I, I shifted. I, I kind of, you kind of up level. It's kind of like you spiral up with these patterns. You become aware of them, whoa, you spiral up, but there's always another spiral and there's always another spiral. And so, you know, that relationship I can see became my next kind of way of, um, you know, living to some expectations of other people at the sacrifice of what was true for me. But it didn't feel like that because I was spiraled up from where I used to be. It felt very 
um, in alignment at that time, but over time, living to the expectations of the external world because it was such an ingrained pattern. You know, that was back when I was um, 24 or something, you know. Um, it was such an ingrained pattern living 24 or 25 years of my life, living to the expectations of everybody else and not having any connection with that internal voice, that internal wisdom, you know, my intuition, my inner tuition, right? Um, you know, at that point, you know, it took some more work and it took some more experiences. And I've, I've continued to myself uh, upon reflection, run into that same pattern of living to the expectation, expectations of others, spiraling up, but still that same pattern coming into play time and time again. And um, it's recently come back into my life um, with relationships, it's come back into my life. Um, just yesterday, I had um, a, a, a you know a pretty interesting day where I had a new level of realization about what's my next step right now in order to believe in myself so that I can serve at my highest capacity because I know my life is about making a meaningful difference in the lives of others. You know, and if I don't generate and continue to generate self-belief within myself, and if I don't continue to do the work on me, use myself as the guinea pig development and you know see what works for me experience it and then simplify and systemize things that I can help and serve other people with and help them to make a meaningful difference in their lives and grow and develop and stop living to the expectations of other people and have full integrity with themselves if I'm not doing that like I'm not living my life that is my life that is my blue it's going to change and it's going to evolve as I do. Um, but at the end of the day, it's all about setting people free. It's about helping people connect to their own inner voice. Stop over, you know, overly listening and relying upon other people to give you permission to be you and do what you want to do and actually know what the difference is to choose something that's in alignment with your internal wisdom versus trying to live to the expectations of others and I had a really great um, amazing lesson um, and experience happened for me yesterday where I got clear on some things and I expressed some things um, with somebody who um, had some expectations on me um, and uh, who I was going to and seeking some amazing guidance and, and very amazing gotten some great great value from um, from this person and I wanted to communicate with them about my next level of truth my let my next level of connection with what felt right to me my internal integrity with myself right which is the whole reason I, I invested in this connection um, was to be able to up level that more get out of control to the expectations of other people, um, you know, stop trying to um, make people be overly responsible for other people um, in the relationship and instead, you know, be responsible for my own life and what feels right to me. And when I started communicating this with this person, they completely, um, completely jumped the gun on what I was saying and projected quite a lot of attack on me, you know, and um, very like assumptions, attack, um, they're trying to use like what my experience was was them trying to use their of me you know and the work that we've done on me you know and um, and also try and use guilt and also um, even you know so I'm not going to go into that right now but anyway it was the perfect experience that I needed to have in order to solidify my own personal integrity. Now, this person was accusing me of having um, for making the next step that I was going to make because it wasn't in alignment with what this person wanted um, in their future, right? And um, and it, may, it allowed me to see on a deeper level again, you know, who I want to be in my life, what kind of person I want to be to my clients, what kind of person that I want to be, um, you know, for myself and for my own future. And I think that, you know, this finish what you started mentality can so trip us up. You know, if we get caught up in the guilt that our past self might have made a decision based on the best knowledge that it had at that time, but your current self with the growth and the evolution and the new perspective and awareness that you have now, that, that decision that your past self made, alignment, you know? So are you going to stay in alignment with 
um, something that no longer serves you and is no longer in alignment with you? Or are you going to be able to be flexible in your approach to achieving what you're ultimately here to achieve and you're willing to, to you know, ruffle some feathers in your external world so that you can stay in full integrity um, in your own internal world? There's nothing more important than that, all right? And take it from those poor souls who got to the end of their lives and their biggest regret in this life was, I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself rather than one I felt was expected of me. Okay, so bear that in mind. I hope it really serves you as much as it served me in my life. If you're looking for a good book at the moment, I would I definitely recommend uh, Bronnie Ware's book, The Top Five Regrets of the Dying, or just Google it and you can find the, um, the, other, um, the other regrets. They're all very, very empowering. Uh, th that number one one like really resonated with me and somebody actually handed me that book um, at that very time where I was making that transition off the wrong path and, um, and discovering the right path. All right, and so um, when they did that to me, it just solidified everything. And so um, you might more so resonate with one of the other um, regrets, and that might be like really, um, really empowering for you to get a hold of, so that you know you can future project and know where your decisions are leading you to, and take the wisdom from the people who've been there and done that, so that you don't have to repeat their same mistakes and make sure that you are living a life that's absolutely true to yourself in, in the terms of the regard, uh, the, the one that we're talking about today, the one that I love the most, the number one uh, regret of the dying. All right, so I definitely wanna check in with you guys. Can you drop me some comments? Let me know where in the world you're tuning in from. Have you got any questions or comments or words of wisdom or anything that you'd love to contribute to the conversation? I always love getting to connect with you guys and uh, I hope you guys are doing really well. Um, Guys, no, I am on day three now of um, this amazing cleanse. I just want to recommend it so much. I feel honestly like in the past when I've done cleanses, I felt really lethargic and like, you know, and I've since realized I was probably not getting the nutrients that my body needed. And what I'm discovering in this current cleanse, which is going to medical medium, Anthony Williams, I'm reading his new book, Cleanse to Heal. Um, you can get the ebook, you can, uh, which is what I've got, um, or you can download the book, whatever. Work out how you're going to get it, but go and do yourself a favor um, and the people that you love a favor because honestly, this cleanse that I'm doing is just so enlivening to the soul. All my cells just feel amazing. I feel like I've got great energy. I feel like I'm getting all those nutrients that have been missing out of my current diet and um, feeling really, really um, free by it. So, and it's particularly good for, for you if you have any like chronic illnesses or um, autoimmune diseases, all those sorts of things. Um, if you've got some really bad health concerns that you're struggling with, it could be the thing that could help you to really set yourself free. Um, personally, I don't have any of those major health concerns. I'm just doing it to up level to the next level of my health. And it's not about weight loss, although if you are over weight, um, what it's really about is cleansing and healing the liver, your internal organs, to remove all the heavy metals and toxins out of your, out of your um, internal world and to actually clear it up so that you can become the best person that you can be, you know, using this beautiful vehicle that we've all got, all right? So hope that serves you. I just love sharing with you guys what I'm currently doing, and this has been really, really valuable, so I highly recommend it. All right, let me check in. I've got Gabrielle in the house, and Rob, and a hello to you, beautiful Gabrielle, and Judy's here, and Gabrielle, yes, life on earth is short. Honest. You've got it, you know, and wow, have I learned time and time again to always just back myself. It always comes down to this. And sometimes I get myself into trouble because I um, enter relationship dynamics on whatever realm that is um, without having the clarity, certainty, stability and connection to my own internal um, world and what's actually right to me. And I'm oftentimes I'm discovering that along the path. And I'm, I'm somebody who's constantly growing, I'm constantly evolving. I'm constantly um, you know, in connection with um, how I'm changing. And as you change, so do the decisions that you need to make in this life. You know, you, you have to realize that you're not gonna, you don't know who you're gonna be five years from now. 
You don't, you know, you don't know who you're going to be um, a week from now. You know, if you're into your growth and your development and you're constantly evolving, you've got to be consistently checking in and making sure that you're remaining flexible with the decisions of your past self and to not fall victim to guilt out of, um, you know, maybe upsetting people that maybe they feel like, you know, you're making a different choice that they didn't, they didn't want you to make or they didn't expect you to make. If it's not right for you, it's not right for you. So back yourself and you're going to upset some people, you know, but at the end, I'm really clear about, I want the quality of people in my life who, are, who just want the best for me. Who want to who know that I'm going to be constantly growing and evolving and I need to be flexible in the choices that I make and I want them to support me on that journey not on their expectations of me to stay the same and stay and that they want me in but to actually know that I'm growing and I'm evolving and you should want the same in your life as well all right, if anybody in your life doesn't want to support what you've discovered to be in integrity with yourself, what's true for you, they don't want to support that, you know, then you've got to consider, is this somebody that I just, I know I need to make a decision? Is this somebody I want to work on it with and make sure that I'm reassuring them along the journey and taking them on the journey as well, like I've done with my family? Um, or is this somebody that, you know what, that, that's okay but maybe they're just not meant to be in my life anymore. And I can be grateful for what's been, um, but now is a time I choose myself. And if they can't be happy with that, that's not gonna sacrifice my own personal integrity with myself so that I can align with what they want from me. All right, that's not going to do them a a any service either because it'll only end up in resentment. Anytime we do something out of guilt, or that's not in alignment with what we actually want to do, if it sacrifices a part of us, we're disconnected from that person. We don't trust them and we don't, you know, we just get resentful towards them. But if you're getting resentful towards them, the onus is actually on you. You're not taking 100% responsibility for where you want to go in this life and making total alignment with who you are and what you want, all right? So keep that in mind and know that, you know, you don't want connections that aren't supportive of what's healthiest for you. And you want people in your life who are constantly supporting you to get deeper, go deeper and get to know and align deeper and deeper with who you are and what's right for you. Okay. And you know, I am a big, nothing can ever be wrong in any relationship so long as you're being authentic. Okay, and you can't be authentic if you're not really connecting into yourself and who you are and what's right. So, you know, you've got to have the courage to go within, to acknowledge what's not working, to be able to communicate that, to align with what is right for you and discover what's right for you and constantly be flexible on that. But make sure that you've got people around you who want to support you to do the same. All right, I'm going off on this one. I love it. And Jay's in the house and Zena and Gabrielle working as a nurse for 20 years. Wow. Um, I've been, um, I've seen more than life, uh, more about life than I ever thought. Wow. I absolutely bet you have Gabrielle. What a special human being you are in this world to support people um, in the medical realm. Um, so you are so appreciated, particularly I'm sure during this time. Um, so much love to you. And I bet what what amazing life lessons to be in a position, to be in an environment where life is born and life is taken away, you know, to put things in a, into perspective. So love, love what you're sharing there, Gabrielle. And uh, to hear some of your lessons, actually, like what you've actually learned about life through that experience. And I'm sure you continue to learn. And uh, Minaj, life is certain. Well, I'd actually say life is very uncertain, you know, and this is kind of a big trap that we get caught up in that creates the most suffering ever for ourselves is when we try and control things and we think that life that it is, it's going to be constantly certain, right? What we really need to realize is that the only certainty you're ever going to have in this lifetime is, you know, what what you have control over, which is what you make things mean and what you do about things, right? What actions you're taking, what you're making things mean, right? That's where your certainty resides. It's not in your external is uncertain and that doesn't have to be a bad thing. You know, I have a 
pretty core belief that I thrive in uncertainty and it serves me very, very well. All right, most people are terrified of uncertainty. They want things to stay the same. Um, and yeah, so that can be a real point of um, causation for suffering for ourselves. So love your contributions, Aminaj. And uh, Brian, always greeting from New Jersey. Awesome to have you as always. And Gabrielle, yes, I've lived that life, doing what was expected. Now at 51, I'm creating my own life. Uh, it's about, uh, it's all about self-discovery. That's amazing. Um, and I love that you're on that journey, Gabrielle. Um, that is so beautiful. It is never too late to live a life that is true to your life. There is nothing more important. If you're not living your life, whose life are you living? You know, nobody is going to make you fulfilled. That is 100% your responsibility, but we're all looking to outsource and handball that responsibility to our partner, to our kids, to our family, to our work and our career, to our clients. No, drop expectations on everybody else making to make your life good and realize it is totally up to you and you only. Okay, so love that. Um, that's such an empowering journey that you're on, Gabrielle. As I said, the most important one, my belief is. And David's in the house, awesome. And Daryl from Canada, always good to see you. And Joshua, uh, yes, Tony is awesome. I'm glad you jumped in. Thank you for sharing your path and continued growth. Love following you and your positive outlook. Oh, so kind, such kind words there, Joshua. You are so appreciated, my friend. And I'm really, really grateful you are joining in and following along and contributing to the conversation. It's great to have you part of the team. And um, thank you so much. And yes, Tony is the best. I wouldn't be doing what I do this today, you know, if it wasn't for the work of Tony Robbins, um, you know, and so many other amazing human beings that I continue to learn from around the globe. Um, but my starting point was in the realm of Robbins' work. So love that, Joshua. Thanks for being here. And uh, Gabrielle, what a blessing to not only discover yourself, but follow your heart at your age. Thank you, Gabrielle. Yeah, absolutely. And you're hitting on a piece of the story I left out because I didn't want to keep you here all day, but I'll just share it with you because, and I know you, a lot of you have probably heard this, but at that Tony Robbins event, I had this moment before I was really able to own it where we were answering these questions, you know, why are you doing what you're doing? You know, who are you doing it for? Whose life are you living? Whose love did you crave the most? Um, whose love did you crave the most as a child? Right? You should ask yourself that question because it generally is connected to who you thought you needed to be in order to get that love, right? And at that time, I was like, whoa, like having this inner battle. There was this part of me, the fear-driven self, like, you've got to finish what you've started, like, you know, and then this other more wise part of myself is like, what are you doing? This is not your path. You know, you're, you're, you made that decision because you wanted the love and acceptance and approval from your father. You know, you thought that's who you needed to be, but you know now he just wants you to be happy and this isn't making you happy. So what the hell are you doing? And I'm having this internal battle. Well, no, I can't make a change. They'll hate that and I'll get hit with all this and I'll lose this connection or whatever. And then right in that moment, precisely, this woman across the room, there's 2000 people in the room, this woman stood up and she was crying her eyes out. And she um, re she yelled out to Tony, 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 I'm so grateful. You're right, she was t crying tears of joy and gratitude. And he hands her the mic and he's like, what's going on? What's happened for you? And she said, you know, Tony, I am 65 years old and I've lived my entire life, you know, as this very successful high paid lawyer, but I've had three divorces and none of my children talk to me. Um, and I've just made this realization right now um, and that I chose to become a lawyer because I felt that's who I needed to be to get the love, acceptance and approval from my father. And at 65 years old, I feel so grateful that I am so young that I've got the entire rest of my life now to get off the wrong path and to discover a path that is actually true to who I am. You know, and it was in that very moment where I was contemplating, I was thinking, I'm too old to make a change, right? And I'm 24 or 25, right? And here's this woman, that was actually the main thing that I was really like, oh my God, I'm too old to make a change, right? I've already done this other uni degree, I have to finish this one, like I'm getting too old at university, or 25. 
and this woman standing up has 40 years on me who tells me you know who tells the whole room wow like she's so young to finally make this discovery it completely obliterated um, my fear and insecurity of being too old to make a change and I uh, in that moment felt so grateful and so lucky that yeah I even had another 40 years on this woman to live a life true to myself and it's not an easy path you know that's why people oftentimes resist it right they often resist it because they think whoa like then I have to take all the responsibility for my life what I can't just go to my job and just get paid and then go home and do what I want to do you know no it's it's not easy like it's a constant challenge and battle but it's so fulfilling yeah, I would much rather you know come across the challenge the inevitable challenges of discovering the life that's true to who you are and putting yourself out there and really moving in that direction um, because it seems a hell of a lot more painful to waste my entire life not having the courage to address what's true to myself and living somebody else's life only to get to the end of my life number one regret of the dying I wish I'd had the courage to live a life true to myself rather than one I felt was expected of me all right so I so appreciate you Gabrielle and yes I feel very very grateful um, for making that discovery at the age I have but it's never too late I mean that woman 65 made that discovery I don't care how old you are I don't care if you're a 95 year old and yourself free you finally discover what it is that juices you and you start doing that you know I don't care how old you are that's a win at life um, from my perspective but you know we don't want to get to the end when it's too late we can't make any changes um, and finally be able to um, able to actually acknowledge that and own that and communicate that all right so love that Gabrielle and go you and Brian it took me a long time to learn I needed to um, expect more from myself than other people total ownership um, as always thanks for another honest message oh, always Brian and I love hearing your journey as always you know and it's um there's another great book that I read many years ago um, by Christine Hassler I just interviewed her amazing husband um, just uh, a couple of weeks ago um, but Christine Hassler's book um, expectation hangover really good book um, for having expectations even on ourselves it's like what we need to do is be authentically inspired you know and to align fully with what's authentic to ourselves you know instead of um, having these expectations that we need to meet and remember you know um, a great Tony Robbins quote is when you swap your expectations for appreciations the whole world changes so instead of expecting others or expecting ourselves how can we appreciate more of ourselves taking action in the direction of what's authentically inspiring for us right which is in total alignment to us and cutting away don't forget the cutting away of the things that are getting in the way of you moving in that direction as well um, so it's an appreciation and I'm learning this lesson um, time and time again I don't give myself enough appreciation do not celebrate my wins enough and it can definitely cost me um, my, my progress so something that I'm bearing in mind for sure as well and I love that sharing Brian and Rob Cheers, love. Missing your influence. Doing great here. You look well, exceptionally, exceptionally well. Good on you. All the best. Thank you so much, Rob. And always great to have you. I hope you can join us in uh, the Inner Circle Community Catch Up Zoom call we're having um, on. Uh, it'll be Saturday evening your time. Uh, Sunday for everybody in Australia. Um, Rob is in the states, so um, everybody in. The be a part of our Limitless Potential Academy and you want to get amazing masterclasses get to connect with our team and uh, every month we get on a zoom call connect in um, share our successes our support um, get to connect with amazing other like minds and open-minded people um, you know you definitely want to join us so you can shoot me a message if you want to be a part of our team as well and uh, Elf is here as well and Lucy and uh, Jose hi Vanessa thanks for sharing this knowledge you're so welcome uh, quick question when following what you really want to do how do you deal with uncertainty oh it's an okay I'm recommending a lot of books um, right now um, but I really want you if, if that's a question that you want the answer to here's the book for you Susan Jeffers it's a classic um, feel the fear and do it anyway 
All right, Susan Jeffers um, unfortunately has passed away at this stage. Um, her book is um, quite old. I don't even know it is right now, but it's pretty old. Um, but it is an absolute classic and foundational to personal development. And basically the thesis, is, thesis of it is, you know, that, you know, you need to trust in your own ability to always figure things out. If you trust in your ability to figure things out, uncertainty will no longer drive you, the fear of uncertainty. Because uncertainty, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the only certainty you're going to have is that you, know, you can control what you make things mean, what actions you're going to make. Uh, actions you're going to take and you know what Susan Jeffers um, so rightfully puts down is if you can instill a core belief within yourself that no matter what happens you'll always find a way you'll always figure it out be unstoppable uncertainty will no longer um, drive your car you drive your vehicle of life all right and it's a big it's a really great question that you've asked there Jose and also, if you guys are interested in Tony Robbins' Six Human Needs and how to identify what your hierarchy is, uncertainty is one of the new uh, one of the needs, um, and how you want to make some shifts. Um, then ultimately, you can if you join the Limitless Potential Academy, it's um, the very first masterclass that you get access to, and it's really in depth. It's really powerful, and it's based on my own personal experience with many of Tony's um, events and programs um, and trainings. And I've simplified and systemized and gone into a lot of detail in terms of apply it to your life based on my own experience and based on the experience with my clients. And so um, you can get instant access to that when you join. Um, and I highly recommend it if you are somebody who struggles with like how do we deal with uncertainty, it'll put everything into personal perspective. Because I'm a big believer in you know getting out of this one size fits all of personal development learn these concepts and then you know like does that that might relate more so to you than it does to this other person this is a way of actually identifying how do these needs apply to you as the individual what's your hierarchy and how's that costing you how's it serving you and how to make some shifts and changes so that you can be the kind of person who knows exactly why you do what you do and you're kind and transforming so that you can become the person that you want to be so that you're the one in the driver's seat of your life um, not uncertainty or like we're talking about today the expectations of others so so appreciate that question Jose and Simon's here and Justin much love and Gabrielle my most powerful less life lesson we are spirit, mind, then body. Spirit is our powerful being. Mind is our computer. Body is our vehicle. Second most powerful lesson, control and certainty are illusions. Third powerful lesson, life has no mistakes or failures, only lessons. Oh, drop the mic. Uh, that is awesome. I love all of those lessons. Personally, I completely agree with them. And, uh, you know, I've been on that journey with those as well. So um, I love that. Gabrielle, thank you so much for sharing. I think people will definitely um, find that valuable as well. So you're such a beautiful superstar. And Thomas is here as well. And Patty and Simon, morning, love it. Um, we're, never too, we're never too old, absolutely. Unless we can't get up and out of bed. Um, and by then we are regretting what we didn't do because we didn't get started. Absolutely, Simon, you're so spot on. And uh, yes, you know, never, ever, ever too old. Don't give yourself that excuse. You know, the more uh, you, know, you make the realization of being on the wrong path, being in the wrong relationship, um, being in the wrong career, whatever the realm is, you know, maybe it previously served you, maybe it no longer serves you, you know, but when you make that realization, you must align with it or your soul will terrorize you for it, all right? You'll always have this nagging thought that you're not doing the right thing and, and it's draining and it makes you um, play out in the life in very unhealthy, destructive ways, all right? So you always want to make sure that you're realigning, rechecking in, and you're never too old. You know, you've only got this life to live, like live it fully, no matter what the timeline. And like Simon said, Simon says, um, don't get to the end of your life when you to finally acknowledge that, you know, do it while you can. 
I love that, Simon. So good. And Patty, hi Vanessa. I'll have to catch a replay, replay um, but love what I've heard so far. Grateful to hear that beautiful soul and I hope you do catch a recording. Hope you get a ton of value from it. And Kane's here and Farine, awesome. And uh, Gabrielle, love you gorgeous Vanessa. Oh, so much love for you, beautiful Gabrielle. Um, so, so grateful to each and every one of you guys for showing up live today. I hope today's message has definitely served you. It's my constant, learn I'm constantly evolving and evolving to a new level and a new experience of learning this lesson, you know, and I feel like it's probably going to continue to support me in my growth. Um, but at the end of the day, make sure that you're somebody who can't be bought by your external constantly align and be willing to let go and be willing to um, have people not like you so that you can go about becoming and being the best person that you can be for the purposes of serving at your highest capacity. All right, really hope this has served you. And as always, I'm sending you guys all of my love, light, blessings, gratitude, energy, and everything extraordinary coming to you to wherever you are in the world today. I really do hope that it's beautiful, amazing and extraordinary that you're doing something super empowering and today's message has definitely served you. Um, and hello to beautiful Anya who's just joined. I hope you catch a recording. Hope this is of value to you as well. Um, I'm signing off. I'm thanking each and every one of you guys again for joining me live and I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. Much love.